And Palestinians yesterday mourned Fatima Berniwa. We, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that correctly. I apologize if I'm not. The first woman to be in prison by Israel who died at the age of 83 in Egypt yesterday. The Palestinian news Wafa reported. The Fatah movement began in Egypt issued an official statement mourning Bernawi, saying she had died following years of resistance during which she was an exceptional model for Palestinian women. Bernawi joined the Fatah movement when she was 18, following in the footsteps of her father, who took part in the 1936 Arab Revolution in Palestine and was an active fighter during the Palestinian Freedom Movement in the 1960s. In 1967, Bernawi was arrested and became the first Palestinian woman to be imprisoned in Israel. She was released on November 11th of 1979 and then exiled to Lebanon before returning to the Gaza Strip in 1994 leading the women's police force. Bernoulli will remain a historical mark in the history of the Palestinian national struggle, Fatah said. The movement's leaders and cadres will continue their struggle until the national rights that Bernoulli fought for. Represented by the establishment of an independent, sovereign Palestine state with Jerusalem as its capital are achieved. Bernawi was born in Jerusalem in 1939 to a Nigerian father and a Jordanian Palestinian mother. In 1948, she moved with her family to Jordan before she returned to Jerusalem in 1960 where she settled. Bernawi was the wife of the late freedom fire fighter Fawazi al Nimr, who passed away last year. In 2015, Abbas award, awarded Bernawi as the Military Star of Honor. So. Amazing. Yeah, it, it is. And I guess I'm, you know, the fact that many of us never really heard of her, learned of her, were able to be inspired by her is, a, is tra tragic, really. I don't know in, in Palestine, it's, uh, hopefully it's different there and Palestinians are well aware of her, um, but people around the world should know. They should know about her. Yeah. Um, I just can't even imagine, you know, that life. You know, just her whole life. You, you don't know what, how a life would have been had this not occurred. Mm. You know, because it was a, just the big part of her life. You know, we've got to get our country back. Well, and, and she's not, obviously, she's not alone in this. And... You know, there are, there are hundreds, if not thousands, if not millions of Palestinians who still have that resolve, um, yes. and that, that desire to resist. And I don't know that, that the world understands that and understands why, you know, it's because from everything I've ever heard or seen, Palestinians say they'll never give up. They'll never give up and because it was their land. It was their homeland. Um, and I mean, the stories of people being, their families being separated and, and the Nava people being pushed out and expelled from their country and being promised a right of return, but never having it. Um, how can, I mean, it, it, you're right, Dolores. I mean, it, how can, it's got to be really hard to live with that. Um, 
Right, and being locked, it's like you're locked up and everybody is against you. It's like you're screaming and screaming and no one's listening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I read something from a, a resident of Palestine. I think I still have it around someplace. He said we, we, would, we would have been better off as puppies or kittens because if puppies or kittens were crammed into a box the way we've been, the world would be up in arms, uh, would be outraged by it because of their concern for puppies and kittens. But mm -hmm. because we're Palestinians, we're not, we're treated as less than, you know, puppies or kittens. I thought that was, when I read that, I was, it was heartbreaking, but true. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. 